Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this short webinar on using customer data to find more sales. Just waiting for a couple of people to pop in. So if you're watching the, the recording, then uh, welcome to you as well. I know not everybody can be here live, so um, we'll just crack on and get going. Hi, Julie, nice to see you here. Um, I was like, there was a few more going to join, but uh, we'll, we'll get going, we'll get going. Um, I'm not broadcasting it into the group, it's just a Zoom meeting here, so um, let's get going. So um, I did want there to be a little bit of audience participation, but if you don't want to, that's fine, but um, I can unmute you later on. I just wanted to start off by saying, you know, here we are, we're in a very strange place, which nobody seems to be quite able to cope with. We're, people are putting plans into place, um, but everybody's got this slight sense of otherworldliness about the whole thing, about, I don't know, waiting for something to actually happen. Um, I'm just going to put this light on again. Um, waiting for something to actually happen or I don't know um, but essentially businesses will fall into well there's four categories because the fourth category is the businesses who are doing really well out of this situation which some of whom are, you know it's perfectly reasonable they should be doing well out of it um, others are potentially profiteering and there is a difference between it between those two um, as long as it's no, there's nothing wrong with making some money out of um, providing products and services to people that they need, but uh, increasing your prices and uh, to a ridiculous degree and or selling stuff that's not actually necessary um, through fear, uh, like some of these stupid masks. I get emails every day about the mask I'm supposed to be buying. Um, I'm, I'm not up for that, but I'm guessing that those people aren't here because those people will be incredibly busy um, and good on them and good, you know, fantastic. And some of them are even recruiting. Um, so that's good news as well. Um, but the one of, ones of you who are here are presumably in one of these three categories here. So some of us will be in a situation where we just can't trade. We can't operate our business um, for whatever reason. Um, you know, it's just, just not possible to operate. So cafes and restaurants are closing down every five minutes. I'm seeing somebody posting something saying that their favorite cafe is closed because they just can't continue to operate. Um, there will be other businesses, and I'm hoping that's kind of most of us in here just now. The ones who can't operate at all, um, this isn't necessarily for you, although you know, there might be other things you can do. Um, it's really for the rest of us who just have a, 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 a very sharp downturn in sales, but potentially have things that we can sell and we can continue to operate in one you know, some way, shape or form. Um, cafes and things, a lot of them seem to be turning to offering some kind of food delivery service or takeaway, even if um, they're not actually open for people to come and sit in them. So it's about finding that creativity. Um, so I'm guessing, as I say, that most people will be uh, on here, will be in one of those categories where they're, uh, they've just got fewer customers, uh, they've had jobs cancelled um, or they've still got some customers, but the customers are potentially buying less from them. So, um, and if there's another option that I haven't thought of, then uh, perhaps you can tell me. So what can we do? We can develop new products and services. If that's um, within your remit to be able to do that, that's absolutely fine. So taking some time to sit and come up with uh, something different and I guess that's what this is. This is a, a new offering to people. Um, I'm offering it free but obviously if you wanted to carry on and do some work with me then then that would be lovely but that's not what this is about. Uh, but you know it, essentially people can take some time to sit down and think well okay I can't do X but maybe I can do Y. Um, it's a time for being creative with offers so we'll all have stuff in our inboxes 
I saw that, I think it was Costa Coffee yesterday, we're saying if you come in and buy a coffee, you'll be entered in a draw to win free coffee for a year. So that was just to get footfall in the door and people buying coffee. So um, if you can do something like that to um, attract people into you, then uh, fantastic. Uh, gift vouchers is another thing. So buy now, eat later, uh, buy now, have your photograph taken later, whatever it is. Um, those sorts of things can be very successful. Um, you could go and market like mad to try and get new customers. You know, you can just, you know, Go for it, big style, um, and try and attract some new people into your domain. But the thing I really want to talk about today, and all of those other things we can talk about in others, and potentially I could, I could probably set up a week of um, 12.30 lunch and learns. And, and in fact, maybe I'll do that. Um, we could actually reach out, and I did that deliberately, reach out to our customer base. Uh, and that's what this particular teach is all about because um, if we've been trading for more than a fortnight um, we've got a, a, a list of customers that we have done work for serviced in some way sold products to in the past unless of course you are retail or hospitality where you they walk in and they walk out and you don't know who they are um, but if we have got that information we've got a customer base that we can reach out to and maybe if um i've used it again because I, I did it deliberately the first time but i forgot that time um and maybe if you're in a situation where you are a walk-in place and you're thinking oh i don't have a list of customers then this is maybe a time to think about how can i potentially engage those people so you can engage them through social media um you can do things like have loyalty schemes you can get apps developed and apps are not that expensive now because a lot of people develop an app and then they'll just put your branding and your skin around it so it's not dreadfully expensive so that you've got those people you know think just eat but um but maybe a little little simpler you've got those people in your world and you can contact them but for the rest of us who have got a list of customers that we have done work for and sent invoices to um i guess that's the the main thrust of this particular teach at this moment in time um, so I just want you to have a think how many are sort of current customers how many of you customers that do buy again um, those of you who were on the the early morning 8 30 teach the short one in the business success society you will say you know I mentioned um, Meta who's in our group who makes absolutely fantastically beautiful wedding dresses um, and we kind of hope she doesn't have terribly many repeat customers <laughs> um, because that's, uh, that's just not the way that should really work. But what she does have is other customers who perhaps get other items of clothing made. It's not, not just about the wedding dresses. But most of us will potentially have customers that can buy from us again and again and again and again. Um, maybe not uh, once a week. Um, but in you know maybe after a year or a couple of years so for example um, I've contacted Julie to get my headshots redone because my hair colors changed and I they need an update and you know so I will buy again but I'm you know I'm not going to be buying every single week and how many customers have just kind of gone off into the into the wilds you know who who um, you've done some work with them maybe a long time ago if you've been in business for a while and they've just you know wandered off into the wilderness so just have a think about those kind of numbers of in terms of the current customers you've got the ones that that are have an opportunity to buy again and how many have gone um but but not necessarily gone for good so um i want you to have to think about that I do also want you now to think about your ideal customer avatar because this is an absolutely perfect time to reevaluate and think again about your ideal customer avatar because um, if it hasn't changed um, as a result of this, then you're in quite a good situation because that means that you're already marketing to the people that um, you know, is not affected by this particular 
situation. So, you know, people who have got online customers, um, probably uh, they don't need to rethink about this. Um, but anybody else who whose business is face to face and who you know they now cannot deliver whatever the product or service is um face to face it's time to think about what are the attributes of the those customers is it the same customer base or are they slightly different so this is a good time to do um redo your ideal customer avatar so um, with that in mind, I think 12.30 tomorrow, and those of you who signed up for this one will get the link to tomorrow's, um, will be uh, more on um, defining your ideal customer avatar, because I think this is a, a really, really, it's always a good time to reevaluate. But whenever anything changes in the market, then absolutely, this is a great time to reevaluate your ideal customer avatar. Um, so, and, you know, those of you who have done some of my other courses will know there's three ways to grow or indeed sustain a business um, because if you're not growing, you're not, you don't have a sustainable business really. Um, you can either find brand new customers um, and we've, you know, we've talked about that and uh, that's certainly something we can do and we can evaluate that after we've done the ideal customer avatar work. Um, uh, we can get more orders out the customers we have, or we can increase the value of orders. And those are the kind of the three ways of growing a business. As an aside, um, I just want to say as well, I saw a really good post from, from an accountant in another group. Um, the other thing to do is to evaluate your cost base. This is a really good time to think, I'm paying for that subscription, and I've just taken out my Zoom subscription, but actually, you know, it's not, it's not a bad time to do it. Um, I'm paying for that subscription. Am I getting value out of it or could I drop it? Um, that's not for today either, but I just thought I'd drop it in now while, um, while it was in my head. So um, I seem to have duplicated that slide, so I'll just carry on. Um, products and services. So can you produce something absolutely brand new? You know, can you do something... Um, that you've not done before, but still within the, the sort of remit of your business. Can you resurrect something you used to do that you haven't done for a long time for whatever reason? And that might be, that might be a kind of an avatar thing. Um, maybe your avatar changed and your customer profile changed. Maybe you, started, um, maybe you started with business to consumer and you'd gone more business to business and now actually it makes more sense to go back to business to consumer. So products for the, that were relevant to them might be relevant again, and you might target those people. Um, and I, then I've mentioned creating bundles there. So do you, um, do you want to put together things in a different way to make it an attractive option for people to buy from you? So bundles, whatever, whatever those are in your world, um, just uh, something that's attractive at a price point that because generally a bundle price will be less than the cost of buying all the items separately um so you know a takeaway deal so people might have come in for coffee and a cake um so you at a at a price you might say well if you pop in for a takeaway um I'll, you know you'll get it cheaper uh, that kind of thing um I have put in there, can you retrain? Because I know a lot of people who are taking this time to get on and do some online learning, as in, you know, bigger courses than this. So um, can you go and do an online course, maybe cram something in a week to 10 days uh, that gives you a, a, an enhanced skill set that you can then sell? So, uh, but it has to obviously be quickly because we don't have time to... Um, mess around here um, and then there's the idea of selling in advance can is there any way you can get money out of people now um, that you can then deliver something later on in the year and yes you'll probably have to incentivize that a little bit by say by giving a discount um, for buying now but if you can do something like that and get the money in now um, then fantastic, you can live off that money now. It does mean that you might be really busy later on in the, in the year um, when you won't be making as much money. So really, really think about that and what that might mean. So you might find if you oversell, 
I would I would limit this and um it's going to be really difficult though to give time scales because this is the problem with this particular set, set of circumstances we have no idea how long we're doing this for um if we all knew that in a month's time we could all resume then uh it would be much easier to plan to strategize to do you know to have a sort of thing this is what's going to happen until such and such a date and then after that i'll do something else um at the moment we just don't know we're i think people are kind of talking about a three month ish window where we think we might be back to some kind of normality um but if you do have offers or vouchers which you want to put a time limit on just bear in mind um you know what happens if that time run it runs out and people have paid money in good faith and you know it can it can get messy but as i say also be really careful with it because what you don't want to do is yes lovely to get that money in now but if everybody cashes in their vouchers in september and you can't take on any other work because you've got to service those people because they've paid for it then you'll have a very quiet month financially in september so <laughs> bear that one in mind um so let's go to your customers let's go to your customers so um make a list uh, however you have so if you have an accounting package and you invoice them individually as opposed to putting through some sort of cash sale um, daily total then you'll have a list of customers um, that you can usually from pretty much any accounting system you can export to an excel spreadsheet because we're going to go in as you will see there we're going to go on to create an excel spreadsheet um, and then you can rank them however you want to rank them um, you can rank them by income or last invoice date and create this grid in excel or sheets in google or um and numbers Hi, Judy. So I just thought I'd seen somebody else pop in, but they disappeared again. Um, so I'm just going to share my spreadsheet, if I can do that. So let me do that. Share that. Here we go. So um, a little colourful screen there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so sales opportunity grid. So I've got my customers down here on the left-hand side, A, B, C, D, E. Um, I've got, and you don't have to do these. This is just for your own personal. It depends how deep you want to go into this thing in terms of prioritization. But this is just for your own kind of um, interest. Uh, when did they last buy from you, and how much did they, you know, how much did they spend with you? Just to give you an idea of who they are and you know what what the opportunities might be. And then if you wanted to, and you have the skills to do so, you could sort by um, their order value or sort by date or whatever. But I'm just going to leave this here for the time being. And if you need any help with that, then put your hand up and give, give me a shout. Um, then across the top, I've listed my products and services. So there they are all there across the top. Um, and then I've added, so these are up to about here, up to service C. These are my current ones, so ones I've offered in the past. And then these are new ones on, on the right hand side here that I could potentially offer. And then I've color coded it. So the sort of um, pinky orangey color means that uh, Adams bought product one, has bought product one for me and product three and service A. Brown has bought product two, Carter has brought what one and two and service A, and you, you get the drift. So anywhere there's this kind of peachy color, that is the the sign, and you can use your own colors or whatever, however you want to do this, a sign that they have bought that particular product from you in the past. So then what I did was I went to the next one, which is never. And that is where, for whatever reason, Mr. or Mrs. Adams or whatever will never buy product two from you. And that might be um, just because it's just not the right product for them. So go in and put the red ones in because you don't want to start focusing on people that cannot use that product or service. It might just, just not be um, appropriate to them at all. Um, you'll notice that the holiday is a bit different um, and I just want to be clear about this and this is also a little bit about your avatar stuff 
um, you potentially want to say, do you know what? That wasn't a good customer. I don't really want to sell to them again for whatever reason. And you have every right to do that if you want to do it. So just blank them out and just say, yeah, they bought product three. They spent tuppence hate me with me. Um, they were, a, you know, they were a difficult customer. It took ages to get paid. You know what? I'm not going to sell to them. And you might also have others as well in my grid. I have a grid like this, exactly like this. Um, in my grid, I've ones where I've, I've, I've blanked them out, I've blacked them out because they're uh, no longer trading. So um, hopefully we won't have too many of those. So that's the red one. So sold, you've sold to. Never, you never will um, sell that product or service to that person. And then everything else is green, which means there is an opportunity, for example, here to sell product three to um, Jim Defoe, right? Um, and he might also take service A with that or service C. So you get, you get the idea? So the green color means there is an opportunity, there's a potential opportunity to sell um, those particular products to those particular people, yeah? Um, then you can reach out to them, I've done it again, and you can contact them. Now, you can either, uh, and I'll go back to the slides in a minute, you can either phone them up. Um, if you have a small list and a lot of time in your hands, then um, ringing them up is, a, is, a, is an option. So you can just ring them up and say, are you interested in, I've got this new product. And you can work through them and sort of, you know, from top to bottom and call them and say, I've got this new product. You can email them individually if you like, and you can tell them about your new product. Or you could set up an email marketing campaign. So um, I think email marketing is potentially another, um, another one for these lunch and learns. Uh, possibly Friday, we'll do email marketing. Um, I'm making this up as I go along, okay? <laughs> As I think most of us are. I challenge anybody to say they're not this week, making it up as they go along. Um, now you'll see that I've colored one in in blue just to show you. So I have called uh, Mr. Adams this morning and I've told him about Service C. And that's just to kind of start to get you thinking about who, who do you need to focus on, who do you need to follow up on. So if I now call Mr. Brown about um, Bundle X, then I can color him in blue and say, I've spoken to him. Yeah, and if you, obviously, if you sent out some email marketing, then you could do a whole column if you wanted to. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the point of the blue. And that was something, um, I went down to London on Monday to get coached um, so that I can pass the good stuff on to you guys. And uh, I already had this idea of the, the grid, which I'd got, shamelessly stolen from somebody else because nothing's new in the world and helena said to me have you you know have you marked them off as told told and sold and i went oh I like that yes so i've now implemented the the told thing here so now we know who we've told about um the new products the new services or if you just want to talk to them um, and say how's it going how are you coping with this did you know that i do product three I know you, you know, I know you bought product two from me in the past. Did you know I did product three? Because um, I think it could really help you at this particular moment in time. If you've got a small number of customers and you have high value products and services, then I think the obvious thing to try and do is to actually get, I was going to say get in front of them. That might be a Zoom call again, um, where you can dem maybe demonstrate something or show something to them. Um, Meetings are probably off the table for the time being anyway. But I'm going to stop showing that and I'll go back to the slides. There we go. So how to reach them. So yeah, um, call them, as I say, if appropriate, arrange a meeting. That's an online meeting or whatever for the time being. Because um, then you could maybe get different people in or you could run your own webinar. Um, that's entirely possible as well. So in, invite people along to a webinar, um, use Zoom. Um, Zoom's free if you keep to less than uh, 40 minutes. So if you can do it quick, and I, I used to just do that. I used to just say, it's a 30 minute webinar. <laughs> um, but now I, I realize I actually need to, to do longer meetings with more people. Um, if it's one-to-one, -one, by the way, it's free. 
Um, you're not limited to the 40 minutes. Um, email them, email marketing, as I say, that I've added that to my little list here that I'm making of um, lunchtime teachers to do. Um, and I've just said, don't forget lead magnets. So um, it, again, if you want to record something and then put it out and send it out to people to attract them in, whether that's brand new people uh, in terms of part of your marketing or whether it's, oh, I've recorded this, uh, Mr. Smith, I thought this might be interesting to you because um, it's been a long time since we've uh, done business and I think this might be of interest to you. So um, there's a whole pile of things that you can potentially be doing. Um, what I, that, 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 that slide is from somewhere else, but I do like my no problem, Alama. Um, I know the slide, I know there's a duplicate slide in there and that's because I have I was moving them around and I was supposed to put another slide in. Um, a word on side hustles. I know a lot of you love a side hustle. And I know a lot of you will be thinking, well, this is great. I've got my side hustle. I can do get use my side hustle to get me through the next, let's call it three months. And I absolutely hear you. I absolutely hear you that you need money coming in. I just want to put up a big, enormous red flag and say, don't neglect your your real business don't just be don't just throw yourself into the side hustle and to the expense you know to the expense of your business because that could be incredibly dangerous you might then not have a business a functioning business to come back to so even if you can't uh, operate or operate in the way you normally do uh, do not just um, go off and do your side hustle and forget about your business. You will have to keep marketing. You'll have to keep in touch with customers. You'll have to find ways of doing things that keep the business in some way, shape or form uh, ticking over uh, because otherwise it will just disappear. And uh, I challenge you to sort of say, right, yeah, I'm going to make some money, but I need to keep I need to keep some level of the business going. Um, no doubt there'll be people who will disagree with me, but I actually feel quite strongly about this, that, that I was already starting to sort of say to people, side hustles are all very well, but you, you can't chase the two rabbits. Um, but now I think there is this big danger that people will say, yeah, I'll just, I'll just focus on that for the next three months. If it was a week, it probably wouldn't be a problem. I think if you give up your business for three months, then it, it will probably just disappear. Um, and there will be others out there, who your competitors, who won't be doing that, and they will suck up all your customers. Um, I'm going to finish that now and um, ask if... Uh, well, I'm going to stop the recording so that if anybody does want to speak. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, and I will open up the microphones for anybody who wants to have a chat. Uh, so I shall just finish that now. Thank you for joining me.